This video was made with support from the National Lottery Heritage Fund. We all love a trip out to see the latest blockbuster. I certainly do. Now, this area has a rich history in cinema. But before we look at ours, let's go back to the late 19th century and see how public cinema in the UK began. The picture house that is widely recognised as the birthplace of cinema in the UK is in Regent Street, London. The building was purpose-built for optical exhibitions and was added on to the Royal Polytechnic in 1848. It was in 1896 that cinema was born in the UK when the building hosted a demonstration to the press of the French Lumiere brothers' cinematograph machine. Now their invention was a camera that could record, develop and project film. The demonstration included now world famous footage of factory workers leaving their factory and the arrival of a train. The Pathé Cinema Journal reported that the Polytechnic had identified the potential of the machine, stating that when the invention was still in an infant stage, the Polytechnic gave it a home, realising at once its vast possibilities as an educational instrument and as a means of public entertainment. The Regents went on to show thousands of films but closed in 1980 after a decade of hosting musicals. However, following significant restoration, the Regent was opened again as a cinema by the University of Westminster in 2015 and remains open as a working cinema to this day. Now the Grimsby and Cleethorpes area has over the years had many cinemas and they've been known by different names as ownership has changed and there were loads of them. There certainly seems to be, you know, at one point we must have had, what, 13, 14 plus, I'm not sure of the numbers but there was a lot of cinemas. Um, the most common ones were the Ritz and the Regal which is the previous name of the ABC. They were the ones down Grimsby Road and down Freeman Street. But just around the corner from the one down Freeman Street, there was the Tivoli, but that was bombed during the war. There was also the Tower, which is now a, it was a car rental place. I think it's a printer's now. Um, and around the corner, you've got what is now the Caxton Theatre. That was also a cinema. There was many cinemas. Uh, there was a few in town as well. They had the Savoy, which was now is now McDonald's. Uh, there was others around there. There was the Chantry down Chantry Lane. And the Globe down where Dunelm is now and many more, many more. We all have our favourites and those cinemas we remember more than others. The area was known for the vast number of cinemas that we had, dating back decades. Now, Pete Blanchard was a projectionist at the Ritz, and he started there as a 15-year-old back in 1949. The first film I had to show when I was six, just was coming up to my 16th birthday, um, when I got there, that it was a film I shouldn't be watching, which was The Snake Pit. And it's, uh, it was X-rated, but uh, anyway, we got around that. And uh, my job was actually a trainee projectionist. There was always five of us there. There was the chief, the second operator, third operator, and two trainees. Every Monday morning, it was quite a busy day because we had to set up the programme for the week. Um, the film had been delivered overnight to the back door of the cinema by Film Transport. They had keys for all the cinemas and they picked, picked up the film which we'd been uh, using the week before and uh, then we had to take all the films up to the box and either, either the uh, chief or the second operator would put the programme together uh, because the films, when we got them, were just in tins about 12 inches diameter uh, which con uh, contained a, a roll of film uh, and we had to put them onto our own spools and each of those tins contained 20 minutes of film when the film got to, towards the end of the reel, um, shouted the other lad, or one of us, and we set up the projector ready for running reel two. 
uh, and um, at the top right hand corner of the screen um, a few minutes before the end of the reel um, you, you, we switch the motor on and the projector starts running by the time it gets through then there's another spot and we do a couple of switches and switch from one projector to the other. We also ran the news and sometimes there's a second feature and we had trailers and we had the Pearl and Dean advertising and so all those things had to be put spliced together. When it came to the Saturday night it all had to be taken apart again and put back in the other tins and, and, and sent up, um, put down at the back door, ready for FTS to come, to take over, and there we go again. The ABC, or Odeon, or Regal, in Freeman Street, was one of the biggest cinemas in town. The cinema was very large when I first went. I think it held 1,200 people, and it was always lit up in an orangey-beige colour. It was beautiful to see. Um, there was lovely usherettes wandering around giving you food, drinks and things like that and it was always a nice experience. Later it was converted into three cinemas. Um, the 1200 was reduced quite a lot at that point. The largest still being cinema number one which still from being sat in there looked exactly the same as it did when it was the old cinema. The only difference was there was only 11 rows of seats so looking back you've got a lot of wall where there used to be seats. A few years after the ABC or Rodian or Regal closed as a cinema in 2004, Mark had the opportunity to visit the building. Um, in one of my jobs um, I had access to the building and I went round and it was in a sorry state of repair. At that point there was a big issue. Um, a lot of people understand Grimsby's built on marshland in a lot of places. The interesting part about that is the cinema used to flood on the ground level and there was a permanent pump in place to keep the water out. Problem was, and this is one of the reasons why the restart that tried to happen in the 2000s failed very quickly, was the place is damp. And after they closed it, when it, when it closed its doors as the ABC full stop, or I think it was OD at that point, they turned the pumps off. So what that meant was the basement flooded with water so you couldn't even get into it, which meant the whole place was damp. And that was a common thread in that building, but while it was open, the pumps were on 24-7, so it never flooded. But when I was in there, the floors were wet, there was water dripping off the ceiling, all the walls were, literally as I was saying, all the walls were damp, and you could see all the wet patches, and it wasn't a very nice looking building at all. Now, as mentioned earlier, some of our cinemas had dual roles, both as cinemas and as theatres. And some very big names came to town. And uh, while Mark and my wife were there, we, we were down on, I was working down on the stage doing something or other. And one of the lads happened to say to me, uh, what time are we going today? You see, and I said, oh, I think it starts about two o'clock. So, and, and Eric Morecambe says, well, where are you going? So we got, I said, we're going to the Queen's to see The Robe, the first uh, cinemascope picture. Oh, he says, uh, where's that? So I said, well, I was trying to tell him where it was. He said, can we come with you? You see, so I said, yeah, of course. I said, yeah. He said, well, right, we'll meet outside the cinema and we'll go in Eric Morecambe's car, you see. <clears throat> so I said, well, we get passes to go to different cinemas and it's a thing that, Everybody you know, changes passes at cinemas. So I said, uh, do you want me to get a staff pass from the manager, you see, for you, for you both? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, he said, yeah. So there we toddles off to the Queen's uh, and um, uh, there were, uh, we were sat in the circle there and Eric Morecambe bought the ice creams. My mother, Ivy, worked at the Regal Cinema in Freeman Street. Freeman Street was the centre of the town then. And she used to be on night duty or during the war, etc. And they didn't stop the film when there was an air raid. Usually they put a notice on the screen saying, 
um, there is an air raid in progress and people could leave and go to the public air raid shelter which is situated where Freeman Street Market is now. And this one particular night my mother heard the air raid siren go off so she pressed the button and a little light flashed on in the projection room and the projectionist put a notice on the screen an air raid is in progress and some people left and some people just moved under the balcony to watch the rest of the film which is what they advise you to do in case the roof came down and there was a terrible air raid that night and a, a bomb had obviously landed very close the whole building shook it terrified everyone inside and it was later discovered that those that had left and gone in the public air raid shelter had been killed because the public air raid shelter received a direct hit and those people left sitting in the cinema survived. Cinema attendances over the years have fluctuated depending on what else is happening in the world. The biggest impact in recent years was of course Covid. Wars, you would think, would have a negative impact on attendances, but if you look at attendances in the 40s, they were bigger than the 30s, presumably for news purposes, as not everyone had tellies in those days, so services such as Pathé News was an important reason to visit the cinema. Now, a major impact on cinema audiences is the growing number of TV stations and streaming services such as Netflix and Amazon Prime. The 80s saw economic challenges for the UK as the pound slumped against the dollar, so that didn't help. Well that's a brief history of cinemas in our area. Now audiences are on the increase again, but I fear they'll never reach the ditty heights of post-war Britain. Now the Parkway here has held film premieres in recent months and Parkway is where I'm going now to see the latest Spielberg blockbuster. The Heritage Channel is supported by the National Lottery Heritage Fund.